Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and oh boy, I'm about to piss off a lot of fairing SSTO fanboys. Here we go. Well, how's everybody doing today? I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I had to work in the snow this weekend, but I was able to get at least Sunday off so I could do a video. But before we get started, um, the cool thing that I found was I wanted to go back and test out the air intakes and the intercooler because I was getting a lot of good feedback from the video that I made. So I did as I made a little craft that just ran off of the shock air, um, the shock cone air intakes, looked at the drag and the weight and all sort of good stuff and then I put on some intercoolers and did the same thing now interestingly enough the shock air cone shock cone air intakes that actually don't produce that much drag at all which I did not expect however the intercoolers they produce some drag it's not a lot but it's something not to mention that they're almost three times as heavier than the shock cone air intakes so not only are the intercoolers three times heavier but they also produce a little bit more drag so I'm thinking that actually maybe they're no good for SSTOs, period. It's kind of a revelation for me. I'm taking it all in. However, during the testing, I was putting on these aerodynamic nose cones, and I saw that they were producing a lot of drag. But however, this is this is the aerodynamic nose cones that were in the front that were producing a lot of drag. The ones in the back weren't producing hardly anything. So I said, well, maybe I should do the same thing for the front as the back. In other words, flip the cone around. Now, this would common sense sense-wise, would be the worst thing you could ever do. However, we're talking about KSP here, and it's flawed mechanics. Not all of it. A lot of it's good, but there are some game mechanics that are a little messed up. So lo and behold, I flipped the aerodynamic cones backwards, and boom, the drag was almost completely gone. A little weird, but there you go. So if you're going for a more dragless SSTO, you could do something weird like that. <laughs> Your craft would look like it uh, has a bunch of suction cups in front of it, but uh, might work. However, we have to also realized that an SSTO, while drag is extremely important, doesn't stay in the atmosphere for long. Once you get above about 10,000 meters, drag starts to disappear slowly. And once that happens, the main concern becomes weight. How heavy is the STO? Has this, da, 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 da. How heavy is the SSTO for the engines to push farther faster? So the aerodynamic nose cones are still good the right way around. So you're not going to see me putting them backwards anytime soon. It's fine if you're looking for the exact absolutely numbers and shit to get it just perfectly no drag at all well then you could use this little mechanical oopsie game mechanics oopsie oopsie but anyway yeah just thought that was really interesting and i implore you to do your own testing a lot of people comment about something without doing any testing behind it and i'm guilty of that as well from time to time however this video isn't about air intakes and intercoolers no that was a couple of videos ago what this video is about fairings on SSTOs. So somebody in the comments said that you could put an entire SSTO inside of a fairing and eliminate all the drag. Every single piece of drag. No more drag. A drag gone. Or you know, you know, not completely gone, but very little, very teeny tiny little piece of drag. So I said, you know what? Let's go ahead and test it. I um, purposefully put a SSTO fuselage with zero aerodynamic helping bits in it. It didn't connect completely right. It was missing a nose cone on the inside. It just looked like, but well, it looked it looked bad. But I placed all that inside of a fairing that matched correctly with the part behind it and all that good stuff. However, the stuff that was inside the fairing was almost the same size as the fairing itself, so there's a lot of Z fighting going on. So all I did was take the stuff that was inside the fairing and ever so slightly brought it up like a nano, a nano piece, a nano inch to stop that Z fighting. But no, it's still considered what was inside of the fairing to be stowed away. So that didn't hurt the test in any way. And during flight, I noticed that the drag from this sucker went out far out behind the SSTO. Tremendous amount of drag. A whole crap ton of drag. So we did make it into orbit with a, a lot a lot of delta v about 1836 meters per second left over which is still a great amount however during this test we have to see what it would be without the fairing 
And I love the gold color of the fairing. Restock does some amazing things. You should really download that mod. But anyway, so I went back to space plane hangar, took out what was underneath the fairing, took the fairing off, and then put what was in the fairing back onto the SSTO and just used that. Now remember what I put inside the fairing was supposed to be somewhat not really aerodynamic. Aerodynamic. So technically you would think that this would do worse. However, I ended up getting up there with over 1900 meters per second delta V left over, which is not a lot more than what the SSTO with the fairing had on it, but it's still more, which means that whatever's going on is more effective. I did the same flight plan, everything, and the flight plan that I figured out was best for both SSTOs. Like I said, do your own testing. I implore you to do your own testing, because if I got these numbers with a SSTO that the, the parts didn't match up and there was no nose cone or nothing. Technically, game mechanic wise was not aerodynamically sound and I still got better results than having a fairing on. Imagine what would happen if I had made it aerodynamically sound, how much more Delta V I'd have left over. But my testing did not stop there. Maybe a fairing that covers the entire SSTO is not, not what we're looking for. Maybe a fairing that only covers the nose of the SSTO is what we're looking for. Kind of like how Matt alone built his SSTOs with a really sharp looking fairing right in front. Maybe this, maybe this right here will prove that fairings on SSTOs are what it takes to get the numbers. So I went ahead and I made an SSTO with the fairing in the front, just the front. I put a command module in there, but I made sure that it wasn't the same size as the fairing so that if it was by itself, it'd be aerodynamically not sound, I guess you could say, without having the fairing. And surprisingly, I didn't get a whole lot of drag from the nose cone fairing. It was very little drag, so it was looking good for the fairings, fairing SSTO. We were able to get up into orbit with about uh, 1,315 meters per second delta V, which is really good. Thumbs up. So it was looking good. It was looking really good. I didn't think I was going to be able to beat that because the drag was so, so little on the fairing. However, we have to test this. So, I went back to space plane hangar, reconfigured the nose so that the I could take the fairing off, reuse the command module. However, in order for this to work, I had to get a part that could tie in with the command module. Interestingly enough, the Mark III 3.75 meter adapter is the same, almost complete copy when it comes to stats to the Mark III 2.5 meter adapter. Both have the same mass, both have the same liquid fuel oxidizer, both have the same temperature. I mean, they're literally a clone of each other. So that's the only part I used in order to tie in to the command module. And for this test, I didn't even put a nose cone on it. It was just going to go up just the way it was. Now, for some of you who've already noticed, in the front of the command modules, I've been putting a linear RCS port and this is to help with heat during ascension. It's a trick that still works because of the fact that the RCS port is about 2600 Kelvin I think it is. I guess that's what that means. So it absorbs a lot of the heat before that heat touches the command module allowing it to fly through the atmosphere a little longer getting up more speed without popping. So at this point, I was looking at the drag that the command module was making, and it was a lot. And I'm going, whoa, looks like the fairing was actually doing its job by reducing the drag. So I'm thinking to myself, there's no way that this thing could get into orbit with more delta V. Because look at the drag that that thing was producing, right? Lo and behold, when we got up there, we actually had more Delta V left over. Now, it wasn't a significant amount, it wasn't much, but 1,380 meters per second compared to 1,315 meters per second, that's more. Not a whole lot, but more. If I was to be more laid back in my assessment, instead of saying that a fairing in the front of an SSTO is worse than not having one, I would say that they're more or less average. That it really doesn't matter if you're going to get a fairing nose cone on 
your SSTO or if you're going to put just a regular nose cone, it's not going to be much of a difference. Now, some individuals have stated that in order to make this thing work, you actually have to put a nose cone inside of the fairing. However, if you're going to do that, you might as well not even have the fairing to begin with. Why have the fairing adding more weight to the vehicle? We could just put a nose cone at the end and cap it off and be done. You have less weight, pretty much the same aerodynamic properties. It doesn't make any sense. But it's not all bad for fairings on SSTOs. I mean, we've proven that the SSTO that has a little bitty fairing up front for a nose cone really doesn't make all that much difference when it comes to having Delta V left over once you're in orbit, comparing, compared to not having one, a fairing. I mean, a fairing does provide heat resistance up to 2600 whatever, so that, that could be useful. But also putting that linear RCS port in the very tip of your SSTO helps with heat as well. So it really depends on the designer and, and what you're looking for. You could be going for an aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing look when it comes to putting a fairing on the front of your SSTO. Now I could see a full body fairing working for like something that stays within the thick atmosphere. So you build the aircraft with the nose cone and everything else, but then right in the middle is where you put the fairing and the fairing covers most, if not almost completely, the entire fuselage, which would cut out the drag of the fuselage, and because it has a nose cone on it, it's completely aerodynamically, aer aerodynamically sound on the inside as well as the fairing. You don't have to worry about how much weight that the fairing is adding on to the fuselage because you're not really trying to fly into outer space. You're just trying to be really, really dragless in the atmosphere. In that sense, like some sort of really good hypersonic jet. Now that I could see a full body fairing working very well. You would think that would translate over to more speed being able to put it into an SSTO. But as I said before, drag becomes meh by the time you reach 10,000 meters or so. It really starts to die down very quickly and it switches over from drag to weight. So yes, it's very important. Drag is extremely important for an SSTO, but also the weight. The weight is also extremely important. Once the drag goes away, it's all about weight. And if you're weighed down by a fairly heavy fairing that's covering your entire fuselage, well, that's going to hurt your overall, overall Delta V. So I know that a lot of my fans are going to agree with me on this. I've done the research. I did the testing. There it is. Now, if you're wondering whether or not I only did those particular types of flights for testing that 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 would be a no I actually I actually did the tests multiple 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 times and got the same conclusions but I know that there's gonna be some individuals that are gonna cling on <laughs> cling on <laughs> cling on to their fairing SSTOs and find every single excuse in the book as to why I'm wrong but look I'm not here to ruin your game for you I'm just the messenger I did the testing there it is the numbers don't lie you can play your game however you want it that's fine i'm just showing you that in these tests fairings either hurt or on average didn't really do anything when it came to making an ssto more functional so i implore you i implore you if you have an ssto that has a fairing on it and it's getting amazing numbers do a test take the fairing off and see if you still get those amazing numbers or if they're less or more test it test you'll be amazed at what you find out or even accidentally find out like we did with the freaking aerodynamic nose cone being put on a air uh, being put on backwards. I did not expect that when I was making this video. But anyways, everyone, that's all the time I have for today. I hope you had fun and I hope you learned something. I know I did. I want to thank you all for being here and thank you all for being a part of this channel. Remember, I'm not trying to start a fight or anything. Like I said, I, I am just a messenger. The numbers speak for themselves. If you have any ideas or other things that you would like to see me test out, let me know in the comments below. If you have better methods on building SSTOs, the half fairings on them that you believe in your heart and soul can outdo anything then just let me know in the description below and I'll go ahead and I'll give that a test as well but yeah if you like this video please leave a like and if you really like this video consider subscribing I upload videos almost every other day sometimes I upload videos that aren't Kerbal Space Program but those are the days that you know I'm a little bit burned out and I just need to do something else anyway love you all please stay safe and I'll see you in the next video bye for now bye bye